It's an interesting thing to contemplate our monthly theme of freedom as we celebrate and honor Mother's Day. Because if you think about it, there's basically nothing in the world that one could choose to do that would mean as much loss of freedom as becoming a parent. Once you are a parent, you pretty much give up most of your freedom of choice. When you will sleep, or what you will eat, or where you will go, or who you will go there with, it's pretty much gone. It turns out that parenthood means foregoing not all, but a large part of your freedom to consider what you want as important. That's a pretty substantial loss of freedom. And it goes beyond that because, for one thing, children are very unreasonable. And you lose your freedom of how to respond in emotional situations. Most people, when they are rude or unreasonable or out of control, you are at liberty to be if not unkind to, at least to respond in a way that is in accordance to how they are acting toward you. But no, with children, you have to be the grown-up. You have to respond in a way that is loving and adult and caring, in a way that you don't have to do with anybody else. And even the most reasonable of bosses is probably not going to have a screaming meltdown with you over the way that their sandwich is caught. But it goes even further than that, because unlike most things in the world, parenthood is really almost impossible to get out of. If you should change your mind and decide that you didn't want to do this thing after all, really can't do it. You can get out of a job, or a house, or even a marriage, but once you are in the parenting thing, you are pretty much there. You have lost that freedom of choice. And you have lost it basically for the rest of your life. I will say, as the parent of a 19-year-old, I am pretty keenly aware at the moment of how parenting is just not a responsibility that stops. It's a truly remarkable loss of freedom. And what's the most remarkable thing about it of all is that it's a thing that people choose. People walk into it voluntarily. Not always, but it is a thing that I, as a parent by adoption, am keenly aware of that one would take on this enormous lifelong loss of freedom as a choice. And really, if you talk to people, it's a choice that hardly anybody ever regrets. Mostly people feel like this is the most beautiful, gratifying, important thing that they do with their entire lives. So the only thing I can think is that freedom maybe really isn't all that important. Not important in the way that we tend to talk about it in our society as the crucial piece, the thing that most matters. I mean, of course, freedom matters. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of association. These things are key to a civilized life, key to access to meaning and purpose. But freedom is something that we think of in those contexts as being the opposite of tyranny. On the one hand, there's this utter external restriction. On the other hand, there's freedom, this perfect good. But what if the opposite of freedom isn't tyranny? What if the opposite of freedom is commitment?
responsibility, connection, concern for a good that goes beyond yourself. In that case, freedom doesn't become meaningless or unimportant. What you need as an individual still matters, but maybe it doesn't matter nearly as much as we might have thought. It's a question that I've really considered in the context of the enormous national debate over gun control, because there are a lot of people for whom guns are something that they see as an essential freedom, and it really is a freedom that stands in opposition to tyranny. Freedom is an essential and absolute right, and having guns, as many guns as you want, as powerful guns as you want, is something that is crucial for the preservation of freedom, for preventing tyranny. And of course, that would feel incredibly important. Nobody, well, I, nobody I know at any rate is in favor of tyranny. But if you understand freedom as being something that is the flip side of responsibility, commitment, concern for what goes beyond your own particular life, well then gun control makes perfect sense. The question is not how do we preserve our freedom, the question is how do we make people more safe? How do we help people to feel like they can go about their lives without being threatened? That's a different understanding of freedom. And so it's no wonder that we so rarely do well in the conversations. Freedom means two completely different things. I wish I could say that I had a solution for the problem. I don't even think it's a problem in terms of I and my view of freedom are entirely right and those other people with their view of freedom are entirely wrong. But I think it matters to the conversation that we remember that when we say freedom isn't free, we're not just talking about the cost to those who serve in the military, who put their lives on the line for the freedom of our country. When we say freedom isn't free, it also means that Preserving what you want comes at a cost for the needs of others. That maybe freedom isn't just an independence thing, that maybe somehow we need to be free to care for all of us, to care for all of our children, because they are all of our children. And so, on this Mother's Day, I invite you for a moment to step outside of freedom into the opposite of freedom, which is commitment to caring, commitment to responsibility, commitment to the larger whole to which we all belong.